Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Hellenic Mathematical Olympiad, final round year 2000, problem number 2. We wish to find all prime numbers p such that 1 plus p plus p squared plus p cubed plus p to the fourth power is a perfect square. A classic problem from number theory. So, uh, my hints. First of all, notice that some number x is a square if and only if 4 to the 4th power times x is square as well. Then consider the expression, consider our sum multiplied by 4 to the 4th power and try to express it as a depressed quartic. What is a de depressed quartic? It's a polynomial of, of degree 4 but without mm, term with cube, so without p cubed freestanding. To do that, it might be helpful to recall the binomial theorem, special case of the binomial theorem, namely that x plus 1 to the 4th power expands as x to the 4th plus 4 times x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1. And then, after all of that, try to squeeze uh, our sum between two consecutive squares, because between two consecutive squares there is no other square. So give this problem a try and I will see you in a minute. Okay, so my solution will be as follows. Let's take our sum and let's multiply it by 4 to the 4th. Let's notice that I can express it in the following way. 4, four times uh, pi, uh, p, sorry, p to the 4th power plus 4 times 4, uh, 4 times p to the 3rd power plus 16 4 p to the 2nd power plus 64 times 4 p plus 256. 256. Okay, and now I will do the following. I want to produce uh, the binomial theorem of degree 4. And let's notice that I already have a nice beginning because I have 1 and 4 here. So I should have 6, 4 and 1. And to do that I will just split these numbers in the right way. So I will have 4 p to the 4th power plus 4 times 4p to the 3rd power plus 6 times 4p to the 2nd power plus 4 times 4 times p plus 1. And obviously I need to add something. Above I had 16, so I had to add plus 10. Here I had 64, so I have to add 60. And I have to add 555. And now let's notice the following. This part, this part right here becomes 4 p plus 1 to the fourth power. And that suggests uh, that it might be beneficial to express uh, the rest of our polynomial in terms of 4 p plus 1. How can we do it? Well, let's look. If I, I can write it like that. 10 times 4 p squared. Uh, plus 24p plus 10 plus 40 times 4p plus 200, 245. Oh, yes. And now let's notice the following I still have 4p plus 1 to the fourth power plus. If I factor out 10, I will have something squared plus 2 times something plus 1 times 1 plus 1 squared. So this part will be will become 4p plus 1 squared. And finally, I will split uh, the rest. I will write plus 40 or p plus 1 and I will have finally 205 doing that. And look, I now I have my depressed cubic, 
maybe I will move it a little bit, everything. Now I have my depressed quartic because I have no third power in my expression. I have just fourth power, second power, and first power, and zeroth power. And now, for the sake of brevity, let, for example, a be equal 4p plus 1. And let's consider what are, what are the possible values of a. Well, recall that uh, p was by assumption a prime number, so it's 3, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. And that means that a will be in the set 9, 13, 21, 21, 29, and so on. Okay. And now let's look closely, let's look really closely at our derived depressed quartic. The idea is, it's a very common idea in these types of problems, the idea is to squeeze this number between two consecutive um, uh, fourth powers. And also I have introduced A, so why not use it? Okay, now the first uh, inequality will be pretty obvious. plus 25. This inequality is obviously true because here I have plus 40 times some positive number and here I have 205. But this, this is just a squared plus 5 squared. And this holds, holds for every a greater than or equal 0, let's say doesn't matter. And the idea is to uh, try to um, say if the following is true or when the following is true. Because here we have some number squared and the next square will be a squared plus 6 squared. And the idea is to find when is it true. When is it true? Because, think about it, if this double inequality is to be true, then our number is between two consecutive squares. So this expression cannot be a square. So the idea is to, uh, to re remove infinitely many possibilities and to be left with only a few possible values of A for which our expression can be a square. So I will, you know what, I will call this an equality asterisk and I will dwell on it. So let's say, let's see, a to the fourth, 10a squared, 40a, 205. Let's expand the right hand side. I will have a to the fourth plus 12a to the second power plus 36. Very well. And now after some simplification, this is equivalent to saying that 2a squared is greater than 40a plus 169, I believe, if I am not mistaken. 169 plus 30 will be 199 plus 6, yes. And look, here I have a quadratic function. Quadratic function is usually much greater than values of quadratic function are usually much greater than values of a fine function. And in fact, you can solve this inequality by hand and it happens to be this is true. This is true already 
for a greater than or equal 24. In other words, in other words, we have now established, we have now established that establish that our sum cannot be cannot be a square if a is greater than or equal 24. Once again, why is that? Because it is strictly be between two consecutive squares. And between two consecutive squares, there are no other squares. So, it's, now it's the easy part. The hard part is finished. We have to check. We have to check what happens uh, at A in the set. Let's go back. 9, 13, 21. 9, 13, 21. And let's also recall that that means a was 4p plus 1. So we must just uh, consider p, 2, 3, and 5. Okay, so let's do it. It's not that difficult. If p equals 2, then what happens? 1 plus p plus p squared plus p cubed plus p to the fourth power. It's 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16. And that is 31. Is not a square. It's not a square. When p equals 3, 1 plus p plus p squared plus p to the third power plus p to the fourth power is 1 plus 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus 81. And let's see. 81 plus 9 is 90. 27 plus 3 is 30. So we have 121. It's, uh, it's 11 squared. Okay. And let's finally check p equals 5, 1 plus p plus p squared plus p cubed plus p to the fourth power is 1 plus 5 plus 25 plus 125 plus 625 and that is, oh no, complicated calculation, 750 plus 25 is 700 775, 780, 781. And if I'm not mistaken, this is also not a square of a number. So all in all, all in all, let's summarize. The only, the only solution is number three. And there are no others. Okay, so remember this trick. Remember that in uh, many problems where you are asked when something is a square, if you are dealing with some kind of polynomial, this trick, squeezing our expression between two consecutive squares, it works very often. Not always, but very often. And also, challenge for you, maybe, because we were considering only prime numbers. Well, there was no particular reason just to constrain ourselves to primes. Our reasoning, we have, we have used the property that P is prime only in one place, namely in this place. If P was allowed to be an arbitrary positive integer, then the only part that changes, changes is that we will have to consider 
many more cases of A. So, for example, we will have to consider A equals uh, A equals, for example, 17 or something like that. I leave it to you. You can do you can do the same task, but eliminating the condition that P is prime and substituting that P is an integer and see if you get any additional positive integer, if you get any additional answers. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.